Now you mentioned that uh, that Luger and Bagwell w- would show up a bit intoxicated. We always hear maybe it was died down by the time you got there, but we always hear that at, at various points, I guess the Hogan and Macho Man dressing room had a big tub of beer, and <laughs> it was like it was kind of like a party atmosphere backstage. Had that died off by the time you were back there? Not that the lower guy or card guys could probably indulge in that, but yeah, did you yeah. still notice it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was going on. Uh, but, you know, I, there, there was no reason for me to knock on Hogan's dressing room and go in there because, you know, I wasn't friends with him like that. Uh, I became friends with Macho Man later, but I, he has told me stories about that and then, uh, before he passed away. And uh, he used to tell me they would, you know, drink beer and take gimmicks for the matches and stuff. And Kevin Nash used to tell me the same thing. He, he used to tell me when they, when they were in WWE, actually, he said he remembered – he wrestled uh, Shawn Michaels on a pay-per-view and I don't remember which pay-per-view it was because I used to travel with Kevin a little bit. And he told me he don't even remember walking out and having a match or anything. So, you know, the whole night was blank. So those guys used to party pretty hard, man. Some of those guys, they were, they were rock stars. Well, that's pretty cool that you would be traveling with, with Nash, who was obviously one of the top stars and Booker for a while there. How did you develop that friendship? Well, uh, turns out I lived across the street from his mother-in-law. His uh, his wife, uh, his mom lived across the street. So uh, actually, I got a funny story. The first time Kevin saw me. So I used to bodybuild back in Ohio before I moved to Georgia and got into wrestling. So you, I don't know if you've ever been to a bodybuilding show, but when you see some of these guys that don't know anything about bodybuilding, they'll be on a stage with these little trunks on, you know, like a wrestling tight uh, with this freaking tan line down the middle of their quad with it was dark as shit from their knee down and then from the middle of the quad up it's white as hell and then their whole body so dark but they got this one white patch on their thigh so and i was doing a saturday night show at this time so every time i went out and did yard work i always had these little short shorts on or i had a pair of like bodybuilding trunks on out doing yard work because i didn't want to get tans tan lines from when i went on the saturday night show so i remember and i had long hair it was down to my shoulder at the time and uh, kevin drove by one day and i didn't know this <laughs> and he saw me in the yard bent over the flower bed and uh he thought man that's a hot chick out there man look at her ass <laughs> and uh so uh and he and kevin always liked big bodybuilding chicks that that's kind of his type you know so he, with my long hair and stuff i guess he thought i was a chick bending over so fast forward to the first time i ever traveled with kevin we come back from uh roanoke virginia we were wrestling there and uh I ended up driving back with him because we would take our paper tickets to the airport and get a, get a, you know, a paper ticket so we could have a flight later for our personal use and then just drive back in a rental car. So uh, we were sitting in a rental car driving back and he, you know, of course, Kevin used to get a, you know, a 12 pack of Coors Light and drink it on the road while we were driving back. And uh, so he, he was asking me one day, he's like, Hey, Alan, let me ask you something. And I was like, yeah, what's up, man? He's like, he goes, you own any guy shorts? And I was like, what are you talking about? Do I own guy shorts? He goes, dude, every time I drive by your house, he goes, first time I saw you, I thought you were hot chick man over the fire bed. And I, and I explained to him why. And he was like, he wasn't buying. He's like, yeah, you fucking, you know, he's like, you, you fucking queer. Like you're wearing damn girl pants outside. So it was a pretty funny story, you know? Yeah, I, I could imagine the neighbors must have been <laughs> uh, talking about you. But the- I didn't give a shit. If you know me, I don't care, man. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.